CV, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you the true story and real inspiration behind the It movies. I love Pennywise. He scares me a lot, but I really do love him. I would love to make this a series because there are so many really creepy true stories or true inspirations behind horror movies that you probably love and have seen. My sister and I did a video like this about the Ring movies, and you guys seem to love that, so I thought It is a really good one. Before I get started, I just want to remind you guys one more time that we do have these really pretty star earrings on our website right now. They are nickel free so they're not going to bother your ears in any way. And we also have the new lava lamp slimes. So nostalgic, so cool. Even if you don't want to open it to play with the slime, you could just like display it and it actually lights up and stuff. It's really cool. So if you guys would like any of that, I have linked it down below. And just before I dive right into today's video on a more serious note, I am wearing this yellow and blue scarf today to show my support and love for all of my subscribers in Ukraine right now. Or if you have any family that's currently in Ukraine, I love you guys so much and my thoughts are constantly with you. All right, so a lot of you probably know that before the movies, there was a book that was written by Stephen King. It is a 1986 horror novel by American author Stephen King. It was his 22nd book. The story follows the experiences of seven children as they are terrorized by an evil entity that exploits the fears of its victims to disguise itself while hunting its prey. Now, the first film adaptation came out in 1990 with Tim Curry. And even if you haven't seen that, I'm sure you've seen the stills from the film. I mean, it's a classic. And then they remade it in 2017 and had a part two in 2019. And these are my favorite horror movies ever. I mean, the cast is absolutely amazing and it's like funny, but absolutely terrifying at the same time. I can rewatch these movies any day. I have watched them so many times. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And before I get into the real story, I want to talk about Pennywise briefly because you have to understand him to understand where Stephen King got his inspiration from. It is a shape-shifting creature known as a glamour who was billions of years old. Although it lived on planet Earth for many years, it originated in a void slash dimension outside of the regions of space known as the macroverse. Since its true identity is unclear due to its shape-shifting abilities and being from another universe, its real name and species are also called deadlights, but few know this, which is why it is referred to as it. I did not know that his backstory was so complicated and confusing. <laughs> like when I was doing research for this video, I was like, what do you mean? Why is he so intricate? The form of a female spider seems to be its true physical form on Earth, living deep below the fictional town of Derry, Maine. And it can morph into any other human or animal or even non-human object. And this ability of his is useful for appearing as a target's loved ones or friends, to manipulate them or to lure them into a trap, or appearing as the target's worst psychological fear. However, it's its favorite most common form is that of a circus performer named Pennywise the Dancing Clown. As most small children love a clown and generally, it seems that the people in Derry happily accepted the presence of a stray circus performer. At the same time, many people are afraid of clowns, making them an easy fear to exploit. Now, its primary goal is to feed on humans. And he generally prefers kids over adults, as you probably know, just because they're easier to scare and manipulate. And according to this creature, frightened flesh tastes better and he uses fear to salt the meat, which is pretty disgusting. Now, its real name, if he even has one, is completely unknown. Although several times in the novel, it calls himself by the name Robert Bob Gray. So Robert Gray or Bob as his nickname. Okay, so let's get into the real life influences. So let's start with Bozo the Clown, which I have briefly mentioned on this channel before. It is guessed that Stephen King was slightly inspired by him when creating Pennywise. He was known as the world's famous clown in 1946, and the character was played by Bob Bell in the 60s, hence why Pennywise's nickname could be Bob. Now, he obviously wasn't a villain. In fact, he was incredibly loved by kids. But when I look at old photos of him, I have to admit that he is kind of scary looking, but I guess all clowns sort of are. Okay, this next inspiration really disturbs me. This is a man named Albert Fish, also known as the Child Eater. Uh, this is a real person in real life, and it's a very disturbing crime. This man was known by many, many names as well. He was known as the Gray Man, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Maniac, and the Boogeyman. From July 1924 to June 1928, he was actively a child cannibal, and he claimed to have caught over 100 kids. And honestly, I can't even like delve into this case because I think it would break all of YouTube's guidelines. But I think you understand the gist of it. 
by the sentence that I just read. Now, he apparently used the name Robert Gray as an alias, which like I said, was what Pennywise would call himself in the book, so coincidence? I think not. It is a very dark thing to get inspiration from, if you ask me, but there are so many similarities between this man and Pennywise, because Pennywise goes after children and essentially feeds on them, if you will. And then he also got his inspiration from another real life crime case. This is the case of John Wayne Gacy, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. John Wayne Gacy was a notorious killer who often dressed as a clown. He was regularly performing at children's hospitals in his clown attire under the name Pogo the Clown or Patches the Clown. Now on December 21st, 1978, Gacy was arrested and convicted for 33 deaths and he was sentenced to death on March 13th of 1980 and he died from lethal injection. Now while there is some debate on whether Gacy truly influenced the creation of Pennywise, the two are eerily similar as both dress as clowns and target children and when Gacy was convicted of his murders in 1980, Stephen King just had begun writing it. So yeah, he would have seen this on his television constantly with people talking about this news, so it could have inspired him while he was writing it. And undoubtedly, the Gacy murders caused an immense amount of fear in the hearts of Americans, and once Pennywise was introduced, he further perpetuated the necessity to fear the people behind the white paint and red smiles. So I think really after these two crimes were committed, people began being really afraid of clowns, and Stephen King definitely took advantage of that. Okay, then we have the Ronald McDonald inspiration. So while Gacy provided the horror inspiration, apparently Ronald McDonald provided the like model for his appearance. In various interviews, Stephen King has referred to Ronald McDonald as a trustworthy character that children know and love, making him someone they can trust. So by modeling an untrustworthy horror creature after a beloved children's icon, it created an unsettling divide of who or what can be a source of comfort or terror for children. And this doesn't mean that Ronald McDonald was the main source of inspiration for the novel, but his iconic look was the inspiration for Pennywise, which is interesting. Then we have the 1980s Stranger Danger Panic, which like I said, Stephen King definitely took advantage of stuff like this. During the 1980s, there was this new wave of public fear because of all the terrible child murders and kidnappings. There was just so many of these cases happening that all parents were terrified and told their kids to stay away from strangers. Former President Ronald Reagan started the campaign for increased criminal penalties for anyone who attempted to or did harm children. When clowns donned their face paint, rainbow suits, and wigs, they were all nearly unrecognizable, and because of this fact, all clowns became immediate strangers. With so many children's birthday parties, including performances from these actors, the fear of a murderous stranger, such as Gacy, was an all too real threat to American society. And that's sort of why clowns aren't present at birthday parties anymore because they used to be so common. Like any birthday party you went to in like the 60s, 70s, 80s would always have a clown, but not so much anymore. Various moments in King's novel allude to the stranger danger panic as a partial influence for the book as the kids who interact with Pennywise often view him as nothing but an innocent party clown. So yeah, I found all of these inspirations to be really intriguing, but also really creepy. And I feel like I will view the book and film slightly different after knowing all of this, but it's still gonna be one of my favorite horror movies ever. Anyways guys, if you want me to continue this series talking about the true stories or inspirations behind horror movies, definitely give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And yeah, don't forget if you'd like one of the new star earrings or the lava lamp slime, I have linked it down below, but I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!